King Keach. Every two minutes, a family hears the devastating news that their child has been diagnosed with cancer. This information from Tracy Shirk, with a degree from San Diego State University, in the blog, St. Baldrick's Foundation, published in 2016, gives us good insight onto how many people are affected by childhood cancer. In this room, we all know someone who has either been directly affected by this disease as a child, or know a family member of a childhood cancer survivor. If you are unclear who this person may be, my sister was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of 10. The United States Department of Health and Human Services should increase funding for childhood cancer research. First, I will talk about why the lack of childhood cancer research funding is a problem, and second, I will discuss a possible solution to this issue. In 2020, 17,000 children were diagnosed with cancer. In the United States, 2,000 children still die of cancer every year. In addition to this, the death rate 15 years after a diagnosis is more than 12%. Eva Foucher and the Cancer Surveillance International Agency for Research on Cancer, in the article, The Lancet Oncology, published in 2019, states how it is estimated that 2.9 million cases of childhood cancer diagnosis will still be missed between the years 2016 and 2030. There are many unknowns when it comes to how to diagnose, treat, and prevent any form of cancer. Tom Missel, the director of the National Cancer Institution in the journal, The National Cancer Institute, published in 2017, states how scientists are using funding to unlock the mysteries of cancer and are discovering new ways to prevent, diagnose, and treat it. Some of the factors that go into the research needed to increase the survival rate for those affected with childhood cancer include the developmental factors, cancer cell mutations, and the susceptibility to certain cancers based on one's genetics and the sex that one was born with. Without more funding to help recognize how these factors play a role in children developing cancer, we may never be able to increase the survival rate to a much higher number. Jill Hammerschmidt, a mother of a childhood cancer survivor, in an interview conducted on October 27, 2021, states how she has seen this issue not only progress as her daughter was going through treatment, but also through her many years working at the Mayo Clinic. Although we have made some progress in recognizing early stages of childhood cancer, such as a 24% increase in the past 40 years, this is still not enough compared to the advancements that adult cancer research has made. Wong K, laboratory director for major diseases in children at the Pediatric Research Institute in Beijing, China, and Kuiyang Lu, the professor and Division Five director of the Development of Health Sciences in the journal Cancer Letters, published in 2020, states how research progress has not even scraped the surface for childhood cancer research as it has for adults. In addition to this, Stacy Steinberg, with a degree from the University of Florida Levin College of Law in the journal The Washington Post, published in 2016, states only 4% of all cancer funding is directed towards childhood cancer research. This is unacceptable considering that the United States has the highest investment rates for childhood cancer research. Most of this funding is given to adult cancer research where this form is more common. Although this form of cancer is more common, it is equally important to give the same amount of funding to childhood cancer research for they will have lifelong health effects that affect the way they grow into an adult. Now that I have explained why the lack of childhood cancer funding is an issue, I will now discuss a possible solution to this issue. As I have stated many times, distribution of funding is the number one most important way to help fix this problem. As Funding for adult cancer research has continued to grow over the years. The amount given to adolescent and childhood cancer research has stayed the same, even if consistently underfunded. Considering that childhood cancer is the number one disease killer and the number two leading cause of death for children ages one through 15, this number should be continuing to grow. One way to fix this problem is by simply giving 50% to adult cancer research and 50% to adolescent cancer research. This will not only help those affected have better outcomes, but will also help future health problems that would cost millions of dollars that come along with developing cancer at such a young age. Lastly, there should be incentives put in place for pharmaceutical companies to invest more money in childhood cancer research. Because childhood cancer diagnoses only make up 2% of the diagnosis every year, pharmaceutical companies thereby deem childhood cancer research unprofitable. By the government putting incentives in for pharmaceutical companies to start contributing to childhood cancer research funding, they may feel obligated to start spending their money on this research.
First, I discussed why the lack of childhood cancer research funding is a problem, and second, I explained a possible solution to this issue. The United States Department of Health and Human Services should increase funding for childhood cancer research. Over the course of the speech, at least three families had to hear the devastating news that I once had to hear when my sister was diagnosed with cancer. My sister was able to overcome this horrific disease, but without more funding from other child may not be as lucky.